in your mind. Say change. Change. It will cause a change in your mind that puts a change in your heart. What does repentance mean? Change. Can't you be sorry for your sin? No. Esau was sorry. It couldn't save him. What is repentance? He said again. Judas was sorry. It didn't save him. Okay, what? Sorry enough. How sorry can you be to go out and hang yourself? But neither of those people had a change of mind. They were sorry, but there was no mind change. The only reason Esau was sorry is because he didn't get the effect he was looking for. He was trying to change Isaac's mind. Isaac, change your blessing. Give me more. But he couldn't change Isaac's mind. That's why Esau was sorry. And Judas was sorry because he realized what he had done in betraying Jesus. But then he wasn't, rather than allowing Jesus to pay for what Judas had done, Judas paid himself. Judas decided he would pay himself, so he hung himself. Peter denied Jesus too. Peter betrayed Jesus too. But Peter let Jesus pay for the sin. How many of y'all ready to let Jesus pay for your sin? That's the only way it gets paid. And not believing that is why we sing Jesus paid it all and then we try to pay Him back. How many of you know you've got nothing that can add to who God is? He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Glory. He is the Everlasting Father. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the Creator of Heaven and Earth. He is God Almighty. Are you getting it? What are you going to add? But He is also the Good Shepherd. He is who searches us out. He is also the Good Father who loves His children. He is also the Father of lights from whom every good and perfect gift comes. That's what the Scripture says. What I'm saying to you this morning is supposed to be washing your mind. It's not just cool words. This is all Scripture. Washing your minds. What washes our minds? The Word of God. Well, time's passing. Let me give you a scripture so you'll think I'm really preaching. Romans 12, 2. While you're turning there. And be not conformed, say conformed, to this world, but be transformed, say transformed, by the renewing, say renewing, of your mind. Say mind. Mind. Renewing your mind. Say that. How are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. Have you ever noticed that you can water a plant? Say a lawn, for example. You can water your lawn with sprinklers. You can irrigate your lawn. But you can put as much water on that lawn as you want. And it will only sustain it. But then the rain comes. My grass gets so green, it glows. You know what I'm saying? About 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you can literally see it's, it's like it's iridescent. That's the difference between the water are you trying to pump out of the ground? What is this? What's this body made out of? Dirt. Dirt and water. Dirt and water. That's pretty much it. When we as Christians try to do what only the Holy Spirit can do, we just kind of sustain because we dig in water out of dirt. Alright? But when the rain of the Holy Spirit comes on us, we glow. And we spill out onto others. Jesus said, when you believe, what is to believe? It's to change your mind, isn't it? You believe something, and now you believe in 
what God has to say. That's true repentance. Just because, see, if your mind changes, everything else changes. I used to think there wasn't a lot of danger in driving down the highway. Over the years, having been almost killed three times, I've changed my mind. The spirit of genius has come on me, and I've changed my mind. And by the way, the wrecks weren't my fault either. I was minding my own business. You ever, you ever been sideswiped? <laughs> minding your own business? Huh? Don't get me wrong. They could have been my fault. They just happened not to be. But what I'm saying to you is to change your mind changes everything else. The renewing of our minds. The reign of the Holy Spirit through God's Word is it renews our minds. Okay, Carrie, how is this practical in the last five minutes here? What washes our mind? God's Word. God's Word. So if anybody want a renewed mind? Let me back up. Anybody need change? Raise your hand if you need change. Well, change starts with a renewed mind. Anybody need a renewed mind? Everybody that raised your hand and wanted change, guess what? You also raised your hand for a renewed mind. Amen. Well, Carrie, if my circumstances weren't so bad, life would be all right. How many of you know that rich people kill themselves every day? How many of you know that there's just as many, per capita, there's just as many rich people on drugs as there are poor people on drugs? See, it's not a gun problem. It's a heart problem. That's right. It's not a drug problem. It's a heart That's problem. Right. That's right. Jesus did not come to make bad men better. Jesus came to make dead men live. Yes. He came to bring life. This guy was jogging down the road one day. You know he had to be a city slicker because he was jogging. He wasn't running, he was jogging. So he's running down the road. He lived on the edge of town. He's running down the road out through the country. Loved to run through the country with all the little birds singing, the little rabbits hopping, you know, no traffic, all that kind of stuff. He was enjoying himself. And he ran by this pasture, and there was a couple of cows out there and an old nag of a horse standing by the fence. And as he ran by, the horse said to him, when you pass that shack of yonder, tell that old farmer that you would give him $5,000 for me. I won the Kentucky Derby one time. And now he's got me out here pulling the plow, and I don't care a thing about that. But if you get me out of this mess with $5,000, I'll see to it, I'll make you rich. He starts running off and thinking to himself, a talking horse. There could be something to this. He gets down to the old shack. Farmer leaned up against the wall. Takes a good spit as he walks up. No, y'all never seen that, but it's happening in the world. <laughs> Comes up on the porch and says to the farmer, How about you selling me that old nag of a horse you got down there in the pasture? He says, Son, that horse been talking to you. <laughs> he said, Don't pay no attention to what that horse has got to say. He ain't never been to Kentucky. <laughs> Jesus through the price he has paid has been to conduct Amen. That's right. Jesus through the price he has paid has given us all things First Peter says, Second Peter says all things say all things all. he has given us all things in regard to life say life Life. life and godliness. When we circle here, Terry, when we get in the circle prayer, we are calling on those all things for life and godliness. But the first thing, did you notice the first thing is not godliness, according to Peter? The first thing is life. We are believing God as we stand in this circle. I want you to remember this as we pray together. We are standing in this circle believing that what God says is true. Somebody said to me, Carrie, 
You memorize the word. You you know the word. Listen, I don't memorize nothing. You know what you think of. What's your default conversation? The government? High prices? The weather? What's your default conversation? The Lord has helped me over the years, and this was not an overnight thing, I just want you to know this. But the Lord's helped me over the years, and He will help you to have your default conversation move to the goodness of God rather than what's happening in the world. Because he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, my God and my strength, when we choose to speak of Him, it's words, right? When we speak His words, what happens to our minds? There. Going to Sunday school does not necessarily wash your mind. Even going to preaching does not necessarily wash your mind. But as you contemplate, Joshua 1.8, the Lord said to Joshua, keep the law, my word. Keep, meditate on my word. Meditate in, in the Hebrew means to chew. Say chew. chew. How many of you know there's a difference when you put something in your mouth. There's a difference between swallowing it and chewing it. When I was a little boy, I loved it. bake and serve rolls. You know what I'm talking about? And we usually had them on Sunday. And there was nothing I liked better than a bake and serve roll and a glass of sweet tea. Problem was, I didn't taste much of the roll. To have as small a mouth as I got, you'd be surprised what I can get in this mouth. It's amazing. I could do a banana sandwich in three bites. And a hot dog ain't got a chance. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I love those rolls, but it didn't taste much of them. That's why I had to eat about ten to know what they tasted like. Because I just shove them in, man, and follow them with sweet tea. I know y'all have never done that, but you've read books about people who've done things like that. The Lord flavors our lives with His goodness. Think on His goodness. Ask the Holy Spirit. What do you think the Holy Spirit's for? Coming in this morning, I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about the horror the United States has experienced in the last month. Horror after horror after horror. Trouble upon trouble upon trouble. And then I felt like the Lord said to me, How's that working for you? How's what working for me? What you're thinking about? The Holy Spirit comes to raise our thoughts. The last time I spoke to you, I sang a song. You raised me up so I can stand on mountains. Well, Carrie, that's a secular song. No, those are heavenly words. The secular guys just have to write. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, raises us up to think thoughts above what we're able to think. The scripture says, God says of himself, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways higher than your ways. He says, but when I send my word, it does exactly what I intend for it to do. What did I read this morning when we were standing in the circle? That those who find those words, it is life and health. Say life and health. Life. That's quality of life and good health. It's more than that. It's quality of life and excellent health. That's what it means. Those who find those words. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of God's Word. Now how does He remind you? Because you've been chewing on God's Word. We've talked some about meditation here. I've taught on that. By the way, Bible study is this week, Thursday night. And if you've been to my Bible study, we've talked about meditation and what it means to meditate. The oriental idea of meditation is to empty your mind. The oriental idea of meditation is not the biblical idea of meditation. The biblical idea of meditation is to command your mind. When David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, my mind. You see, your mind was not given to you to control you. Your mind was given to you to serve you. 
you have the ability to speak to your mind and say, mind, you're going to think on God's Word. You're going to chew on God's Word. And before you know it, you are finding that you are memorizing God's Word. You're not trying. This is not a Bible memorization competition here I'm talking about. No, you're going for life. I was reminded this morning in all of those thoughts as the Lord was speaking to me how dependent, say dependent, Amen. how dependent I am on the Lord. Every day, I am dependent on the Lord. And let me tell you something. God loves those who are dependent on Him. He loves them so much that He responds to that dependency with His goodness, with His good gifts, with His kindness, with His understanding, with His encouragement. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you got a situation in your life this morning that is depressing you? Think about that for a minute. You ever had a bill you couldn't pay? Don't raise your hand. But you ever had a bill you couldn't pay? How did that absorb your mind? How did it stay on your mind? Well, let me tell you what. Can it stay on your mind this morning? Jesus paid your bill. Okay, I don't believe that. We'll read the words. All I got to say about that. He who was rich became poor that I might become rich. There's more to richness than money. Money is part of richness. But there's more to richness than money. But Jesus became poor that I might become rich. Guess what? If I believe that, tomorrow I'm going to be better off in every, situ in every aspect of life than I am today. If I believe that. So I chew well, on what it means for Jesus to give up everything so that I could receive everything. Isn't that amazing? The grace of God, the wonder of who He is, the marvel of who He is, that He would give up everything. And He did more than that. Did you know that? He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. When you fail this week, did you know you're going to fail this week? <laughs> Just thought I'd let you in on a secret. You're going to fail this week. And when you do, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of these words. He who knew no sin, he who had never failed and never would fail, he who had never missed the mark, nor never would miss the mark, he who knew no sin became sin for me, that I might be made the righteousness of God. Stand here. 